and worship. Come on, can we give a big praise for Jesus today? Amen. And then number three, praise brings God's delivering and savoring power. Some of them might say, well, you know, Pastor, you're telling about these four promises that we need, and you preach out of an Old Testament passage. I want New Testament. Well, okay. Uh, we're going to give you some New Testament. But how many of you realize that there's certain aspects of Scripture that transcend being in the New Testament or the Old Testament? There's certain principles that run all the way from the book of Genesis to Revelation, and, and praising God just happens to be one of them. God says, I am the Lord. I do not change. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm just here today to tell you that when the people of God, whether they were the Old Testament saints or whether they're the New Testament believers, come on, when they praise God, God demonstrates His power and His glory. Amen? I love Judges chapter 7, right? Judges chapter 7, Gideon's army's out there, and uh, there's a bunch of Midianites out there, more than, than, than they can even fight, but there's only 300 of these guys. But you know something? They lift up a praise to God, right? They surround them, and all of a sudden they shout to the Lord, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon, right? The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Amen. When they said the sword of the Lord, you know what they were saying? My God has a big sword, and He is is strong and he is able and he is powerful and you know what happened God defeated the Midianites when David went rushing towards Goliath we've all heard that story amen he had already been praising God because he said you know what the same God that delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear I don't know who this uncircumcised Philistine thinks he is but he's going down I come to you in the name of the Lord the God of the armies of Israel and he let it fly come on and God demonstrated his power and Goliath was knocked down and Beheaded, man. Second Chronicles chapter 20. I love this one. Jehoshaphat's day. Only one thing I can't understand about the scripture. Why a mother would name their child Jehoshaphat. Can you imagine? Doesn't that look like Jehoshaphat? I guess I need to know what the, that means. I'm sure it means something wonderful. But... In those days, the Ammonites, the Moabites, and the people from Mount Seir gathered against the people of God. And so they were, I mean, they, they were like the sand of the sea everywhere. And you know what? Jehoshaphat had a plan. He said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to send the praisers out first. Send Judah out. The tribe of Judah. Judah means praise. So you can imagine there's this, there's the, they, they've got all their, their battle gear on. But out in front are the praisers and the worshipers and the dancers. And they're singing the Lord. And they're singing praise to the Lord. His mercy endures forever. And can you imagine what that must have felt like to people watching that? They must have thought these people are crazy we can mow them right down but let me tell you something God decided that he was going to show his power and demonstrate his glory and let me tell you he caused for them all to turn on one another and they didn't even have to fight that day let me tell you the same God in the Old Testament who demonstrated his power wants to demonstrate his power in the new in our day and our lives and in the New Testament come on You've heard the story in Acts chapter 16. Come on, some of you can preach it better than me. Paul and Silas are in a jail cell. They've been beaten for the cause of Christ. They're in stocks, and it was a, like a stinky dungeon prison. But you know something about the midnight hour? Something down on the inside of them, even though their back was bloody, even though it didn't look good, even though it seemed like they were in trouble, all of a sudden they began to praise, and they began to thank, and they began to sing songs to the Lord and let me tell you something God heard that and he got so happy about it he shook that whole prison amen he began to shake that place with an earthquake the chains fell off and they, they were set free but the most beautiful thing about the whole story is the Philippian jailer, he thought, oh, I'm in trouble now. I think I'll just take my life. And they said, no, 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 don't do that. He says, what do I have to do to be saved? He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your household would get saved. I'm just here today to tell you that if we praise Him, God will demonstrate His power in our lives. If we give Him thanks, God will show up in our lives. If we'll have a spirit of praise and not a spirit of negativity, He'll have that. God will show up. Come on, Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. 
And then praise to God is to be a lifestyle. It's not just a Sunday morning style. It's a lifestyle. I remember I was talking to my late father-in-law a few years ago, telling him some of my troubles. He was a straight shooter. How many of you know some, sometimes we need a straight shooter? He just said to me, Bob, God don't like moaners and groaners. You better stop it. <laughs> yes, sir. Are we moaners and groaners? Or are we praisers and thankers? Amen? It makes a difference in how you feel. Did you know if you start telling yourself, oh, I feel terrible. I'm going to moan and groan. I'm sore. I'm tired. I'm beat up. I'm discouraged. I'm down. Let me tell you something. Your physical body will start listening to that, and it will begin to react to that. But if you tell yourself, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Let me tell you, all of a sudden, you'll get an infusion of spirit power, and you'll begin to sing that old song. I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on. He'll give you energy. He'll get y'all keep clapping like that. I might preach for three hours. Come on. <laughs> praise is a part of a believer's life. You can praise him in the morning. You can praise him at work. You can praise him at home in bed. You say, Pastor, I can't praise him at work. Why not? Don't they got a bathroom in there? If you're too ashamed to praise Him at the water fountain, go into the bathroom and just say, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I give you praise today. Just start walking around in there. You can praise Him at Walmart. Thank you, Jesus, for these low prices. Amen. Psalms 34 verse 1 says this, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Philippians 4 verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I'm telling you, it's time to rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Rejoice that you're forgiven. Rejoice that you're loved. Rejoice that your name's been written down. Rejoice in the cross. Rejoice all the time. Hebrews 13 and verse 15, I love this one. It says, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Sometimes it feels like a sacrifice. But it says, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. I don't know about you, but I came to praise the Lord. Amen. I came to worship Him. I, 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 think, it's, I think this is one of the keys for successful Christian living. It's the key. It's one of the keys. Of overcoming sin, that's important, right? But let me tell you something. Praise changes your demeanor. Praise changes your attitude. Praise changes your outlook on life. Praise gives you a reason to live. Amen. Would you stand with me today? Amen. Thank you for just letting me preach today. Amen. God is good today. I'd like our praise team to come.